Debs by Susan Howe. In a lecture of 2014, Susan Howe quoted Robert Duncan on how poetry's secret lies in the keeping of time. Counting the measures, one image may recall another, finding depth in the resounding. It's an apt description of Howe's own method in her extraordinary new book, Depths, which continues to plumb the intertextual depths, also at once debts and deaths, of the archives and collections that have fed her work for almost 30 years. Across the book's four sections, we hear its poems resound in sympathy, not only with their reinvented source materials, but with earlier moments in Howe's career, one of the most significant, innovative, and humane in recent American letters, whose varied threads this new work draws triumphantly together. As Howe writes in her evocative foreword, secret connections among artifacts are audible and visible, and yet hidden until you take a leap. It's the mystery of strong music in the soul. The strong music of Debs reveals itself in poems to be returned to again and again with growing astonishment and gratitude. And these <clears throat> final group is from Periscope, which has an epigraph, one of my favorite lines ever written, from Melville's Moby Dick, God's foot upon the treadle of the loom. Closed book, who stole who away? Do brackets signify emptiness? Was it a rift in experience? Mackerel and porpoise, was this the last of us? These tallied scraps float like glass skiffs quietly for love or pity and all that. What an idea in such a time as ours, Pip among Pleiades. Mystical accidentalism for sound hymned naught in night's botanical glossary. Over unnamed cycles see the rich on that rust heap. Once when the real world was our world in its nature to mind our wood world, threshold world, Little hinge hope of bewilderment, it's parchment, memory, sign. A coverlet has drifted down in double compass with sled loom as if it were patterned. Many shuttles, many treadles. That beam was only a straw. So long as one fact stands isolated and strange, one fact supported by no fact. Wood slipper counter clatter, I can spin straw by myself. If to sense you are alive is pleasant itself, or can be nearly so, if I knew what it is, I'd show it. But no, what I lack is myself. Come, lie down on my shadow. Being infinitely self-conscious, I sold your shadow for you, too. Let's let bygones be bygones. Dust to dust, we barely reach. Hot running on chicken legs, Achilles has his heel. What's left to a third-hand sightseer? caves and rivers. Imagine having to bury yourself over and over, knock on wood. Telling the story of a man who was responsible for his own ruin and is inexplicably condemned to wander in a one-horse chair eternally around Boston, from which historical song he himself cannot free himself with a wave of his hand, whither. In the old days, I used to sit up late till an owl appeared, negative infinity melodrama. I shall never forget you, 
halfway owl shadow marauder. How you flew over and over. Unseen in canoe or cut glass skiff, scudding past sentries on another map, kept secret from earth, moon, vision. Each reflecting an end point where is will remain as is, et cetera. This side, I will show miniature network entanglements, comma, blessings, full stop, yours very. Half hesitation, semicolon, semicolon. Yes, the sea lies about us, our tininess on earth as such. A day without yesterday. Mackerel sky over Boston. Sea tossing waves at ice font doorstep non-fiction prose poem, my icicle hair. These quiet stars, each free intelligence sealed from us. Days and hours are blinds. These screens, these means, each new extreme outvies each quickening after, after. After the millennium, a little before, at brink, at the brink. Humming octaves with wild trills of magic and symbolic logic. A not being in the know. Thank you. <laughs>